Welcome to Montessori Education. Montessori English Medium School. Admission to Jargachinavi. Montessori English Medium School. Guri Palam Road, Tanali. Phone 0864-227-115. Welcome to 19th video, 10th grade English. In the 18th video, we have seen Mrs. Slater, Henry Slater, Miss Elizabeth and Ben Jordan. Uh, they are about to have tea before visiting or paying the homage to their uh, father, Mr. Mr. Abel Merriweather, who was lying dead upstairs. So, let us continue. Mrs. Jordan surveyed the table and said, yeah, if tea is ready, we will have tea first, then uh, we will see that. That's not very long. Henry. Uh, Mrs. Slater puts the tea uh, kettle and gets the tea ready. Henry. One thing we may as well decide now is the announcement in the papers. Mrs. Jordan. I was thinking of that. What would you put? Henry says, no, while having tea, we have an important work to do. What is that? Announcement of things that is on the papers. What paper? Bill paper. Bill paper. Grandpa's uh, father has put it on bill paper, right? So that we need to announce. What does it mean? What is for whom? And how much is for whom? Mrs. Jordan. Yes, yes. I was also thinking about that. What would you, what would you put? She's asking her husband's opinion. What do you say? Mrs. Jordan again. Well, we will think about it after tea and then we will look through his bits of things and make a list of them. There is all the furniture in his room. Yeah, first what we do, we have tea. Then we go around and uh, uh, watch the things, count the things, okay. Uh, one stool, one chair, one bureau, one chest of drawers. All these we count, put it on the paper. What is for Amelia, what is for Elizabeth, we divide afterwards. And there are a lot of furniture, furniture. Furniture. Plural is furniture. Singular is furniture. So there is a lot of things we make in store. Henry. There is no jewelry or valuable of that sort. Yeah, a lot of furniture there, uh, so many things are there, but jewelry is something of that sort is not there. Henry says, Miss Dolly. Except his gold watch. He promised that to our GP. See, this sister is not a simple lady. She says, yeah, of course we know there is no jewelry, but gold watch is there. That he has promised to our Jimmy, my son, Ben Jordan's, Elizabeth Jordan's son, Jimmy. Mrs. Slater, promised to Jimmy? Hey, I have never heard of that. <laughs> Mrs. Slater, this Amelia Slater is not a simple woman because she is the sister of Elizabeth. She says, promised to who? Jimmy? Hey, I have never heard of that. Mrs. Jordan, oh, but he did, Amelia. When he was living with us, he was very fond of Jimmy, you know. You might have not heard, but you know, for a few years, he, uh, our father lived with us. Now he was living with you, but before that, he lived with us, right? At that time, he was very much fond of. He loved Jimmy so much. So at that time, he said, Jimmy, before I die, I will give my gold watch to you. Mm. Mrs. Slater. Uh, well, I don't know, Mrs. Slater says, well, it's a amazed expression, well, I don't know, because I never heard of that. Ben, anyhow, there is this insurance money, have you got the receipt, 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 position, silent letter, so you need not to pronounce that, receipt, Okay, okay, God watch, let it be there. Now we have the premium amount, right? Maybe a few uh, lakhs of dollars, thousands of dollars. Let us see. Anyhow, he has paid his premium, right? Where is that receipt? I have not seen. Amelia says, Amelia Slater says, I don't see. Victoria jumps up from the sofa and comes behind the table. She was sitting on the sofa and watching uncles, mummies, uh, arguments and dividing this. She at the table, the dining table, right? She jumps from there and comes to the table. Mother, 
mother, I don't think grandpa went to pay his insurance this morning. So she comes very close to Mrs. Slater and says, Mommy, I don't think grandpa went out uh, to pay the premium to this morning. Mrs. Slater says, yes, he went out. Went out. Victoria, yes, but he did not go into the town. He met all Mr. Tartarson down the street and they went off past St. Philip's Church. Victoria came to Mummy and said, Mummy, Grandpa has not paid the premium. But Mummy says, he went out. Victoria says, yes, he went out, but not to the town to pay the premium. He went and met all the daughters of his friend. And they were talking something. They went to St. Philip's Church, underlying St. Philip's Church. Well, do you think he has not paid it? Was it overdue? Do you think he has not paid the thing? Ben says, was it overdue? Overdue means the period lapses, not uh, paid in due course of time. Mrs. Slater, I should think it was overdue. Yeah, it was overdue maybe. Mrs. Slater says, Mrs. Jordan, something tells me he has not paid it. So Mrs. Jordan says, my sixth sense tells me that he has not paid. Ben, the drug and all the beggar. Now Ben Jordan got angry and said, that old man. It's an irritating, annoying way of telling that old and drunken beggar, Mrs. Jordan, has done it on purpose. Do it something on purpose. On purpose means deliberately, intentionally, just to annoy us, just to irritate us. He might have done it purposefully without paying that, before paying what good that old man has done for us. Mrs. Slater, after all I have done for him, having to put up with him in the house these three years, it's nothing short of swindling. Oh, old man. For three years in this very own house, I have to put up with it. I have to bear that old man. So with all the trouble I have taken to take care of this man, it is nothing short of swindling. Nothing less than swindling, deceiving, cheating, swindling. Mrs. Jordan, I have to put up with him for five years. Oh, you are talking about three years adjusting with him. Mr. Jordan says, I have to put up with him. How many years? Five years. Mrs. Slater, and you are trying to turn him over to us all the time. Oh, I know, I know. Mrs. Slater says, I know, I know. You, three years after all this, sorry, um, five years, he stayed with you. I know. But every day, every morning, you used to pray him to go to Amelia's house, go to Amelia's house. That is what you are trying to turn him off. Henry, but we don't know for certain that he has not paid the premium. So Henry said, hey, stop you both sisters arguing. We don't know for certain. We don't know whether he has paid the premium. Mrs. Slater, Victoria, run upstairs and fetch that bunch of keys that is on your grandpa's dressing table. Victoria, go up. Get the key, bunch of key, which is on the dressing table of your grandpa. Victoria, timidly, timidly means? A lot of fear in grandpa's room, Mrs. Slater. Yes, I don't like to, but I don't like to, I don't like to go there. Why do you think uh, she says I don't like to go? You know the answer. She was timid, she was afraid. Why <coughs> go to grandpa's room? Why grandpa is lying dead, Mrs. Slater? Don't talk so silly. There is no one who can hurt you. Victoria goes out reluctantly. Reluctantly means unwillingly. We will see if he's locked up, if he has locked up the receipt up in the bureau. Hey, Victoria, don't talk silly. Go. Nobody's there to catch you. Victoria goes unwillingly. Let us get the key and see whether he might have kept my mistake in the bureau here. Ben, in where? In this thing? He raises and examines it. Hey, where? You mean in this thing? Which thing? In this bureau? Mr. Jordan also rising. Where did you pick that, Amelia? It's new since last I was here. They examined it closely. So meanwhile, Mrs. Jordan, who was also sitting for tea, she also got up and they both went to the bureau and touched it and see the polish and oh, made of pine tree or teak wood or I don't know what sort of thing. Sedan from Lebanon. Beautiful. Where did you buy this? Where did you pick it up, Amelia? It was not here. 
since I have visited here last. Business day. Oh, Henry picked it up on the way. Henry, when he went for jogging or um, running or town or somewhere, somewhere he got it. Some shop he got it. Victoria returns. He scared. She closes the door after her. So she went up, right? Victoria went up for what? To bring the bunch of keys. Now she returned, very scared. She entered and closed the door behind. Mother, mother. Victoria said, What is the child? Mrs. Slater, in a very really angry manner. Hey, why? Grandpa is getting up. Grandpa is Ben, Ben was doing it. What? Mrs. Slater, what do you say? Victoria, Grandpa is getting up. Grandpa is? Mrs. Jordan says, the child is crazy. How can that man can get up? Mrs. Slater, don't talk silly. Don't you know your grandpa is dead? Hey, Victoria, too much of talking. Don't talk so silly. Don't be so stupid. How can that man get up? Victoria, no, no, he's getting up. I saw him. They are transfixed with amazement. Victoria clings to Mrs. Slater. They are transfixed. What is transfixed means? Unable to move. Stupefied. Amazed. And his daughter, Victoria, clings to her mother. Why child clings to mother? Because they were scared. Then suddenly, yes, yes. yes. The look, they look at the door. A slight chuckling is heard from upstairs. Chuckling. Quite loud. And maybe slippers sound, maybe for walking on the tiny footstep sound. Chuckling is quite loud, meaning. The door opens, revealing an old man clad in a faded but grey dressing gown. He is in his stockinged feet. With the stockings put on the feet, this old man comes. Although over 70, you have seen 72, although over 70, he's vigorous, active, well colored, not faded color, well colored. His bright, malicious eyes, malicious means harmful. Here, he is not going to do any harm. Maybe indirectly, at the end of the story, you understand what harm he does to his daughters. But his bright, malicious eye, twinkle under his heavy reddish grey eyebrows. Eyebrows are reddish and grey in colour and his eyes are twinkling and he enters in a faded gay colourful dressing gown. The door opens and his old man comes. He is obviously either the old man Abel Merriweather or else his ghost. This may be most probably the old man Abel Merriweather or else he is ghost. So this is the end of the lesson of a reading Dear Departed by William Stanley Fountain. Please answer me as part of your homework. When Mrs. Slater asked Victoria to run up and get the fetch the bunch of keys that was in grandpa's dressing table in grandpa's room, why do you think Victoria was unwilling. Did you understand the question? When Victoria was asked to go to grandpa's room and fetch the bunch of keys from the dressing table of her grandpa, why do you think she was unwilling? Thank you and thanks for watching the video.